Good day everyone, it's Angelo Ramora here. I'm your favorite Australian and the real estate dingo bringing you another awesome vlog. And today I'm talking about this, how to buy your first investment property without overpaying. Let's get it started. Okay guys, I've promised myself to make this short, sharp and sweet, but just like with every video, it'll probably go for 10 minutes. So I'm really gonna try and condense it as much as I can. First, I wanna to talk to you about this. When I started my journey as a real estate investor, I made a lot of mistakes. And one of the mistakes was I was impatient, okay? So I was just buying properties for the purpose of adding more properties to my portfolio so I could call myself a grand real estate investor, okay? And it was great to pick up chicks because um, you know I could say that I'm a real estate investor, I'm a successful entrepreneur, but I wasn't really adding any quantity to my portfolio. I wasn't really generating a better life for me and my loved ones. So anyway, thankfully I woke up and smelt the roses and sold out of that portfolio. And then of course I restarted my real estate investment journey. So message for you is this, you have to be patient when you start your real estate investment journey. Okay, very, very patient. Don't rush in, don't jump into anything. There is no rush, okay? First thing. Second thing is this, um, how to not overpay for a property. Um, I think you need to surround yourself with the right people. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I've done hundreds of videos and I always keep talking about this and I'm literally like a broken record, okay? So teamwork makes the dream work. Real estate agent, real estate attorney, title company, accountant, property manager, um, uh, appraiser, building inspector, contractors, maintenance personnel, other successful real estate investors that are gonna be your mentors per se. You know, you have to surround yourself with these people. So spend the time in networking, you know, shaking hands and kissing babies, go to real estate events, post online on forums, ask questions. I mean, spend thousands and thousands of dollars on lunches and dinners and coffees. And I mean, guys, the best investment is investing in yourself, okay? I'm not saying buy courses and DVDs and masterminds. That's all fake guru crap. I'm saying go and talk to people that are actually out there doing it every single day. And it's really not gonna be that hard to find them because you will see them in the trenches doing the work. When you meet all of these people and when you talk to them, of course, um, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm considering you doing it in a specific area, in a specific region that you wanna be investing in. These people are ultimately your eyes and ears, heart and soul. They'll be the ones that will be able to um, mold your opinion when it comes to real estate investing and also give you a lot of real estate insight in regards to everything that's happening in that area from the price points, the market valuations and all of that fun stuff, okay? So teamwork makes the dream work. Network your ass off. Second thing, guys, you have to become an expert of this particular region, okay? So we've, we've spoken about, you know, talking to a lot of people. Now let's talk about some of the data, the stats, the analytics and all of that mumbo jumbo. And I mean, immerse yourself in everything and anything that you possibly can find online when it comes to what properties are selling for on the MLS? What are the price points? Um, what are the renovated properties? What renovated properties are selling for? What distressed properties are selling for? What properties are renting for? How much can you buy a distressed property for? Um, you know, how much can you sell a renovated property for? Um, check out Craigslist, uh, Facebook. I mean, guys, you name it, leave no stone unturned. I really want you guys to truly become um, you know, masters of everything that's going on in that particular area. And you're gonna get a lot of insight from, from, first of all, the people that you're meeting with, but then also you're gonna educate yourself by looking at all of the online stats and the demographics and comparable sales and all that fun stuff. So then, in my opinion, after three, six, nine, 12 months of you doing all of this work that I'm suggesting right now, you truly will become a market expert. I mean, there's nothing that you won't know in that particular area. You're gonna know what a true, what the true value of a renovated property is. You're also gonna know what a bargain is when you see it. And you can literally make a decision very quickly and purchase a deal for dirt cheap because you understand the market value. Um, guys, last but not least of how to not overpay for a property is we spoke about it. I said, be patient, okay? Nowadays, um, you know, I've done over a thousand deals. I literally stopped counting at 500, but I think we're over a thousand deals. We offer on a hundred plus properties every single week. We only buy a handful of properties. I only buy when the price is right and when I know I can make a good profit and still deliver a good product to my investor for fair market value with a good cap rate in place, okay? So once again, going back to the first thing that I said, 
Be patient. You know, where one door closes, another door will open. Just wait for the right deal to come along in the right area that you can buy for the right price that needs the right amount of rehab work where you know you can make a good profit margin or you can make a good return on investment if you're buying and holding, okay? So, um, and that, in my opinion, guys, is truly a recipe where you're not gonna overpay for a property. I mean, if you think you're an expert just because you've read one article and saw one video and now you're gonna go into the market and buy a property, you'll probably lose your ass and you'll probably overpay. If you spend a year doing what I just told you, there's no chance that you're, over, that you're gonna overpay. I mean, there just isn't. And then of course, if you're patient on top of that and you wait for that right house and you negotiate well, I really don't see how you're gonna overpay for your first property. So guys, that's my advice for you. Take it or leave it. Um, hey, I would love to hear from you. Um, am I right? Am I wrong? Uh, what are some of the strategies that you implement for not overpaying for a property? Comment below. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm Angela Ramora. I'm your favorite Australian and the real estate dingo. Until the next vlog, you guys have a great day.